favorite entrepreneur here, Sierra Nicole, and we are back with another episode of The Boss Seat. The Boss Seat is a show where we interview different individuals who are absolutely killing it in their prospective fields, and you get the chance to see what it costs to really be a boss. But before we dive in, let's take a quick look at one of our sponsors. This episode is in partnership with Taylor Brands. Taylor Brands is an all-in-one platform that brings affordable branding and design to any entrepreneur or small business owner. Taylor Brands makes it super easy to kickstart your business idea and look professional online with tools like an online logo maker, branded business cards, website builder, domains, and even branded designs for social media. Just go to taylorbrands.com, try it for free, and when you're ready to purchase, use the coupon code SierraNicole20 to get 20% off today's episode, we have a super special guest. Chris, can you please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are? Sure. So my name is Chris James. I'm the creator of a healthy alternative wellness brand. I teach those who are interested in wellness how to heal naturally. So uh, that's kind of what I do. We focus on uh, fasting, dietary strategies, as well as mental, anything that's kind of in that realm. I, I like to dabble in it. So, yeah. That is amazing. And, you know, I actually found you on YouTube, my fiance. Um, he's the one who actually, you know, watches you often. Um, and I've, I've actually done intermittent fasting myself. But what got you into this journey of just living a healthier life? Uh, you, it, that's a, that's a story. Um, it started with a broken heart actually. Wow. Yeah. Funny enough. I, uh, I was going through like a depression and that depression caused me to reach out to uh, my family and, and really like seek like help. Right. I just, I'm, I'm that type of dude that I'm always the one that people come to for help. So I was seeking help. And through that journey, I started to, uh, focus more on my spirituality. And then from there, uh, I started hearing things like, you shouldn't eat this type of food, you shouldn't wear these types of clothes. And I was like, why? Right? right. So then I, um, I found this guy on YouTube, uh, uh, Dave Murphy, who was doing these, these fasting experiments and things like that, as well as Dr. Sebi, which you know, most people are familiar right. with. And uh, I, I started to just test. I was like, well, let me see if what they're talking about makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. And um, I, the first thing I did was a month of vegetarian. Like I stopped mm -hmm. eating meat and I lost weight in problematic areas. I, you know, felt more energy. Um, I was like, there's something to this. Right. So from that point forward, I was hooked. Mm -hmm. How much weight did you lose during that journey? Through the whole journey? Yeah. Uh, most people don't know this, but I actually lost 90 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Now I've put some of it back on because I got too low, right? right? But uh, yeah, I actually lost 90 pounds. Wow, that is amazing. And how long? Like, what was the time frame? Um, I, I will say that it was probably about uh, three years mm -hmm. for me uh, because my, my goal was never to lose weight. So my goal was always like health. Mm -hmm. But through this journey, I started to learn about what healthy weight is. And right. you know what I mean? So my body naturally started to lose as I was eating better and, you know, doing all the right things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So for those in the audience who may not know, you know, what is fasting, um, or some of the other topics that you teach about. Can you just dive into that a little bit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so fasting, um, we typically today talk about water fasting, mm -hmm. all right? So water fasting is you're going to drink just water, you're not going to consume any food, you know, right. no, no juice, nothing like that, just water. Mm -hmm. uh, traditional fasting is no water, no food, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So we call that dry fasting. Right. So that's something else. Uh, but the most popular fasting probably is intermittent fasting. Right. That's where I'm actually doing that today. That's okay. where you, you know, you wake up and you push your uh, break fast mm -hmm. out. Um, you could typically push it out, you know, 16 hours or, you know, it, it depends on the person. Um, and what that does is it allows the body more time to digest the food. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's that's the biggest issue we have is our bodies get all backed up. Is you imagine um, if it's like sewage mm -hmm. or, or, you know, your drain pipes at the house, if it gets clogged up with grease and oil and hair, right. it doesn't drain well. Well, that's the same thing with your body. Mm, so so fasting allows you to kind of clear that out and, and you know, drain. It. 
Right. That's interesting. Um, I'm sure because, like I said, I've done intermittent fasting before, and I know that it's not an easy uh, process mentally to, you know, get started and really be successful in. Um, what are some obstacles that you had to face, and how did you overcome that? Mm. Yeah, fasting is definitely a mental game, but right. there are the physical ramifications. Mm. So um, one of the obstacles that I had to overcome was cravings, mm. right? That right. And that, that happened early on. So what happens is when you start fasting, you're actually going to start expelling uh, the, the chemical constituents that make up these toxic foods that are in our body. Mm. It's part of the detox process, and we experience it as cravings. Mm. So... The, the worst thing you could do is when you're fasting, you're like, man, I'm really craving some co chocolate cake or something. Mm -hmm. And then you break your fast for chocolate cake or you misconstrue what the body is saying. And you think, oh, the body's telling me there's something in cake that I need. Like I need some cacao or whatever, right. right? Some nutrient and you go and have it. That's the worst thing you could do because your body is actually telling you, hey, I'm letting this stuff go. Finally, do not consume it again. Right. Mm, okay. So. Yeah. That's interesting because um, I know I've, I've experienced cravings before and I'm sure a lot of people watching have experienced that, but I didn't know the reason why. Mm -hmm. So that's actually really, really interesting. Um, I know that you've been building your social media platform and you're educating a lot of people on this. Um, with building that, what are some obstacles that you may have had to face? Because I know that, you know, in a, or fat, fasting period or intermittent fasting can sometimes be a controversial topic mm. when in the health field. So what are some things that you had to kind of deal with while building up your platform? Uh, well, you know, the probably one of the most prominent things is people thinking that that they're going to die from doing it or that the information I'm putting out there is going to kill people. Mm. Like early on, that was probably the biggest thing. Uh, even for me personally, like my friends and family who weren't on board, they're like, yeah, Chris, you're going to kill yourself. Mm. So it was, it's, it's, there's not a ton of research because it's unethical to, to kind of research uh, humans fasting in this, in the way that we teach. Mm. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of information about what you would consider caloric restriction and see people misconstrue caloric restriction and fasting, um, especially when it comes to the studies. And so that's, that causes a lot of, of uh, issues and misinformation and people, you know, they're, they're worried about their, their uh, basal metabolic rate. And, you know, they think that if they fast, they're going to damage their metabolism right. and then they're going to gain all the weight back faster than they put it on. But this is just not really understanding how the body works. Mm. So that was, that was definitely a big one. Mm. And for those who may not know, so what are the benefits of fasting? Oh, man. we How much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're literally talking everything from as simple as more energy um, to the reversal of diseases that you, you might find to be um, um, incurable or whatever, uh, you know, allergies so my my brother john he was he was one of the first people that we that, that i worked with right mm -hmm. and he was dealing with a pre-diabetic condition he had just been diagnosed and I, I thought it was weird because the doctor wasn't interested in telling him how he could reverse it or you know avoid diabetes they were like yo come back in three months and we'll have your prescriptions ready we'll get you rocked out right so um through through a, a fasting schedule that we we actually created called the five two um, and, and a little bit of juice fasting, we were able to completely reverse his diabetic condition. Wow. And we've done that. We've duplicated that with, with plenty of members from the community as well as other members in my family, um, every, everything from, you know, uh, pre-diabetic to full-blown diabetes. Mm. So uh, you're talking um, uh, infertility. That was a big one, mm, you know. So we, we have a ton of women in the group. And, um, you know, there's couples that can't get pregnant. They've been trying to get pregnant for three months, 10 months, uh, 10 years, one couple. And just after fasting, uh, I know one couple was fasting for maybe about a month, 30 days. They were pregnant. So, wow. yeah, we get to see that pretty often. That's it's interesting because we don't always think about the foods that we're eating and the effects after, you know, that they may have on our bodies. And so mm -hmm. to hear that um, is amazing. And are you... Are you training or, I guess, teaching people to change the way they eat also? Or is it just, you know, changing that schedule? 
Yeah, it's a good question. So the the uh, brand itself is is exactly how it sounds, a healthy alternative, and you can apply that to to all aspects mm -hmm. of the wellness journey. So uh, fasting has just become one of those things that that it's known for, right? Mm -hmm. But we talk about dietary habits. Um, it's so important to to focus on like what's the what's the right thing to eat. Like everybody's so confused about what's actually good and what's bad, right? right? So what I teach are the, it's kind of like the, the baseline. Like what are foods that everyone consume that are gonna be healthy? And then you can kind of build from that based on you know, your beliefs and everything. But, but the, the best thing I could say is high water content foods. Like fruits and vegetables. Mm -hmm. That's literally the best thing. Coconut water from a real coconut is phenomenal for you, right? right? You get the you get the structured water, so you're going to hydrate really well. Mm -hmm. That hydration allows the cells to release cellular waste and toxicity. It uh, helps with inflammation, mm -hmm. right? Most of our diseases and stuff are, are stemming from things like inflammation, mucus, right? These are very simple core issues that if we address through diet, fasting, etc., we don't have them anymore. Right. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Very interesting. And I know, especially within the black community, mm. um, there are a lot of underlying health issues. And I know with, you know, everything going on and the shutdowns, um, the black community has been affected. Do you get positive feedback for the education that you are giving to the community? Oh, the, the feedback's amazing. Awesome. Uh, I, I have to be honest and say that if it weren't for the interaction that I get and, and you know, being able to actually see people go through their journey, I don't know if I'd still be doing this right. because there's this energetic exchange, right? Like the inter the information and everything I put out there, I see it as energy mm -hmm. and I only have X amount of energy. So I'm putting it out, I'm putting it out and then I'm going to run out. Mm -hmm. So when I get it back is when someone's like, yo, Chris, I listened to your video or I've been watching the channel for a while or I tried this method you talked about and now I don't have diabetes. Now I've lost 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. You know, now uh, me and my husband are pregnant, right? right? So then that's them restoring me and that's been, yeah, it's been amazing. That is amazing. Um, as far as your, you know, personal journey with your business, um, I know that you have an app that's being developed. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so the, the app is, um, we haven't titled it yet. We're going to let okay. the community, but I'm, I'm calling it the AHA Wellness app. Uh, the goal is to combine all of the wellness tools that are available out there, uh, specifically related to fasting and diet and, and things like that, and put it all into one package, mm -hmm. but also create a community that can support you know, all of the tools and everything as well. So uh, we've got a really big following on Facebook. And one of the things that I noticed is I don't have access to my group and my community the way that I need to really disseminate information just because of censorship and things like that. Right. So um, I figured through this app, we can create that community or really just mirror over what we already have available. Right. Um, but, the, but one of the really cool things about the app is we have a feature where you can you could put your phone down um, and you'll just kind of do this little little stance and it will scan your body and it'll tell you um, you know how many inches you have on your wrist or your oh, wow. waist uh, your bust size things like that and so as you're losing weight in real time you'll see that 3d rendering getting mm -hmm. smaller and smaller and smaller wow. and then of course we're, we're gonna allow you to customize it like a bitmoji so that'll be oh fun. that is awesome yeah that is awesome where can if someone's watching and wants to get connected with the your app where can they find the information for it uh, so you'll probably have to, to find it on healthyalternative.org, the uh, the website. Um, my YouTube channel, A Healthy Alternative, on YouTube, and, and or the Facebook group, which is A Healthy Alternative. Mm -hmm. um, oh, my Instagram, too. I've got it. I've got I, I've, I've got it everywhere. Yeah. Like, if you can find me, you can find <laughs> you information app. about the app. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yes, and definitely, um, I encourage all of you guys to really check that out. Because um, I know you've built up a, an amazing and a sh very strong community. Um, and I have a lot of business owners who are going to watch this uh, this interview. When it comes to actually building up that brand, um, I know you're, you're in the health field, but what are maybe some tips that you can give someone who is trying to build a brand um, like you've built with your Facebook community or your YouTube channel? Mm. Uh, you know, I, I feel like... My, my aunt used to call us the microwave generation, right? Like, we want everything right now as quick as possible. Uh, but just like the microwave, when you cook food that way, um, yeah, it might be quick and, and fast, but it's very bad for the, for the body, right? 
Uh, so if you look at your business in a similar way, you want to you want to build your your base very slowly and and surely. Mm -hmm. So uh, my favorite actor, uh, Will Smith, he talks about how his father taught him about building a wall, right? Mm -hmm. You want to build the biggest, greatest, best wall. But nobody says, I'm going to build this amazing, huge wall. They say, I'm going to lay this brick as perfectly as a brick mm -hmm. can lay, right? And then eventually, after time, you're laying each brick and you have this amazing wall. So the way I built AHA was through one-on-one um, inter -on -one interactions with the community, mm -hmm. right? Having that, that my, my finger on the pulse allows me to um, offer services and products right in real time. What, what do people really need because I'm really connected? Right. So the, the most important piece to building the type of brand I have is being connected to the community. That's why with the app, I don't need to do a ton of research. Right. What do people need? What do they want? I already know. Right. right? I'm the same as they are. So that, that would be probably if I said one thing, you know, interact with your, your audience, your group. Um, uh, and just and be immersed. Mm. How do you balance that? Because you do have a pretty big following and audience um, trying to connect <laughs> with so many people. How do you balance that along with, you know, your personal life, your business, all of that? Yeah, that's a good question. My brother asked me that yeah. a couple months <laughs> ago. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of like, um, okay, so I don't know. See, let, let, me, let me say this. For the guys out there, right? <laughs> If you've ever, if you've ever uh, like wanted to jump in the shower with your girl, right? She's she's got the shower going. You want to hop in, you know, maybe wash your back, whatever. And as soon as you touch the water, the water is scalding hot. Mm -hmm. You're like, how can you be in this hot water? Right. It's because you've taken the time to to let your body adjust to the temperature, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't just turn it on, blast, and then just. Ah. Right. It's right. like your body's had time to adjust, and so for me, I think the the slow growth has allowed me mm -hmm. that adjustment period, so that. Um, it's, it looks wild from the outside, but I've had time to work on the inner workings because mm. it, I built it so slow. Right. Right. So um, I would also say systems, you know, like I've got a ton of systems. I've got mm. I've got uh, programs that help me with my, my scheduling. Um, I've got calendars. I've got all of that stuff has helped. And mm. you find which system makes sense as you're growing your business. Right. But you just got to look for it. Mm. Yeah. That's really good. That's really good insight. Um, slow and steady wins the race is what they say. And like you said, we are kind of that microwave generation where we want things quick, fast, mm. in a hurry. Um, but having that stable, you know, foundation, I guess, has really helped you with being able to balance everything and with scaling because you've really been able to scale your brand. So that's really some good insight. Yeah. Scale. I mean, your business has to be scalable. Right. Right. Like if you're if you're. Uh, one might look at what I did early on like it, that's not scalable. I actually had a, a long conversation with um, a lady who was, who was like, what you're doing isn't scalable. It's got to be scalable. Mm, right. And so I, I was looking at ways to scale um, aff affiliations, right? You, mm. you build affiliations with people. Like maybe I can't blog every day, right? I can't blog. I can't do the videos. I can't do all that. But open up doors for other people. Mm. Right? As you're building your business, you're going to find opportunities for other people. Right. So I have partners like people see me, you know, but I'm not the whole brand. Mm, you know, there's right. there's several people. I have a small team that that um, helps put everything together. And that's who we are. It's a, it's a team of us. Mm, and having a team is so important. If you guys are familiar with my content at all, um, I talk about that a lot. Uh, because it does take a team. They say it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a team to raise a business. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to building a team, uh, what are some things that have helped you, you know, being able to, to be that leader for your team? Mm, you ask good questions. <laughs> <laughs> you clearly know what you're talking about. You ask. Um, so for me, right, I wanted team members who were invested in the brand. Mm -hmm. It's not a job, right? Right. The, the, the reason I do what I do and the reason I left my professional field is not to go and find another job. Mm. It's to, to, to follow my passion. And, um, you know, I love that, that idea that if you find something that you love, you'll never work a day in your life, right? So I want the people around me to feel the same. Mm. So I do, I do my best to find people who are already in the community or already on that path. I, you know, I'll, I'll reach outside if I really need to, right. but usually that's contract work. If you're going to be a part of the brand and kind of help build the business, I want you to be a part of the community. And, and then also treat them that way, right? right. Like treat them like partners versus employees. Mm -hmm. um, and so you, you're building that relationship, that trust. 
when people uh, believe that the the business or whatever is their business, mm -hmm. then they they treat it much differently. Right. Right. If I if I have all the resources in the world, I got you know billions of dollars. It's it's not the same as I could pay someone to do something, but it wouldn't be the same as someone who just loves whatever that is mm -hmm. and does it because for the love of doing it. Right. It's just never going to be the same. So that's how I've built my my business, and it's 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 a small knit team, yeah. right? But we but we all really work well together. Right. So no conflict, none of that fighting, internal fighting, you know. Right. So we can we can build much faster. Mm, and that's that's really important. Um, and you really dropped some gems there, and I kind of want to dive into that just a little bit um, mm -hmm. with building those relationships. And I know you said you know you've left your you know, I guess profession to mm -hmm. to do this. What were you doing before? Yeah, I was an electrician. Okay. Yeah, I actually when I moved to Dallas, I I started as an apprentice and I did electrical work for six years. Mm. Yeah. What was that like? Because I've also you know quit corporate America. Um, but I know that transition sometimes is difficult to now having your own business. And like you said, you don't want to move into another job mm -hmm. with your business. But what was that transition like for you? Uh, you, you know, um, people say that you can never be ready for children. You can never be ready to leave your job. Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess I don't really agree. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that mentally I was really prepared, right? Now, everything wasn't perfect. I right. wanted to have more money in the bank, like... I didn't leave my job exactly at the right time, right. but it's it's always the right time if you're mentally ready. Mm -hmm. So I do I did a lot of uh, of uh, mental preparation ahead of time, and I played with the idea in my mind. Um, you know, they say everything starts as a thought, mm -hmm. right? Thoughts are energy. Before any action ever takes place, there's a thought. So that mental work is really important. You know, uh, just pretend. Like you're not working your job anymore and you have bills and you've got, you know, uh, investments and things you want to do and, and create that scenario in your mind as much as possible. If you're not a great visual uh, person, maybe write it out. Right. And, and that helped me prepare a lot. But the transition was honestly uh, what most people would probably think scary. Right. right? It was it, it wasn't perfect. Um, I, I was investing a lot. I literally I I left my job. Then I invested like $11,000 in a program that was going to help me learn to build my academy, mm, right? Yeah. Which I didn't know if the academy was going to do well. I had no clue, but I trusted my, my own worth and I trusted um, the community mm -hmm. and what, you know, what I was building. And so, you know, it was, it was, some people would say it was scary. I guess maybe I'm just a risk taker. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? I enjoyed the ride. And then, of course, it paid off. Mm. But it wasn't easy at, at all. Like... It's never going to be easy. Right. right. And it's easy, especially with we're in, you know, the social media era um, and we only see the surface. Right. So we don't see all the sacrifices that you had to make on the back end. And I think you've really built an amazing brand. Um, so I really commend you for that. And um, if you guys are watching this live right now, make sure you put out down in the comments, believe in yourself. Um, I think it's really important that you, you had that confidence and you believed in yourself even when you did. Like you said, it wasn't the perfect time, but you believe that you would make it happen. Um, so I think that's really amazing. Um, I want you to touch on your book a little bit. I know that you you're also an author. Yeah. So um, can I grab? It? Yeah. I uh, my book is Metamorphosis: A Journey to Holistic Wellness. Um, it's interesting because I started writing this book like two and a half, three years ago, and uh, at the time I didn't want to write a book, mm -hmm. but people were like, "Chris, you should write a book." Uh, and I'm like, "Ah, uh, I want to I want to let the journey unfold a little bit more, right?" right. And so I decided, well, let's release a book during the pandemic. That'll be mm -hmm. smart. Right. Uh, it was grueling. It was wow. really, really tough releasing the book during this time, just mm -hmm. dealing with the distributors and the, the you know, um, the actual manufacturing of the book and all that. But right. uh, the process of making the book was was kind of was seamless. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm, I really just I just talked about my experience, mm -hmm. you know, and it was it was good because I was able to draw from the community and bring their testimonials in um, and, and really just outline what is what's the best way to start from point A to get to point B or, or Z, right. right? Wherever you want to be in life and be successful and do it efficiently, mm. right? So the book talks about fasting. It talks a little bit about the birth of a healthy alternative and, you know, the concept and how it all kind of developed. Right. And then, um, you know, we also talk about some some solutions like essential oils. You know, essential oils are, are just going back to nature and, and plants and 
all of the drugs that are available now, all of the science used to create the drugs, it all comes from plants. It all mm. starts there. Right. So why not go back to the plants? We can we can get the solutions without all the crazy side effects. Right. Yeah. Hmm, that's awesome. That's awesome. And definitely make sure I'll make sure I go ahead and uh, link the the link for the book down in the description box of this video. Um, so make sure you guys check that out. And Chris, I don't want to hold you too long, but I so appreciate you coming in here and sharing your insight and really dropping some gems for us. Um, but everyone who comes on the show, I ask them this one question um, because this is called the boss seat. And I feel like you are a boss within your field. So what does that mean to you? What does it mean when someone says, oh, I'm a boss or, or you're a boss? <laughs> what does it mean to be a boss? Uh, you know, a boss is a leader, mm -hmm. right? It's someone who has followed, but now is the one who's who's kind of showing the way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important that you you don't just command and tell people and whatever. You want to show them how to do it. Mm -hmm. right. um, it's also somebody who who you know walks the walk and, and as well as talks the talk. Like I can't talk about health and wellness if if I'm not that. Right. Mm, so so I always want to um, uh, portray what it is that I'm talking about. And I think that if that's what you're doing, if, if whatever it is that you're if you're promoting fashion or hair, makeup, whatever it is, if you look good, you, you know, your makeup is on point right. or whatever the case is, then you're a boss. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Leading by example. Mm -hmm. Leading by example. If you guys are watching this live, go ahead and throw that down in the comments. Lead by example. Um, because that is so important, especially when you are building a team, building a business, or building a brand. Um, so again, Chris, thank you so much for coming on and taking the time out uh, to talk about your journey, to educate us a little bit in the health and wellness field. Um, I so appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Can you let us know again where we can find you on social media? Yeah, so you can find me on YouTube, uh, Healthy Alternative. You can also find me on my website, healthyalternative.org. And then you can catch me on IG at uh, a.healthy.alternative on IG. Awesome. And we'll also make sure we link those down in the description box. Again, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of The Boss Seat. And we're going to catch you guys next week. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of The Boss Seat. Make sure you are catching me over on the Live Waves app where we are doing some free bonus content just for you. You can download the app for free in your Google Play Store or your Apple Store. And we'll catch you guys there in a few minutes.